Hey Rock Buddies, it's Papa. Hope you guys are doing well. Today's topic, the Fort Payne Chert Formation. We're going to learn about where it is, what it is, and how it formed. And if this video is helpful to you, I hope you will give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because that's the way I know I'm putting out good material for you guys. So, Fort Payne Chert Formation, here we go. The Fort Payne Chert Formation covers generally the area in the red oval. It includes most of Kentucky, a lot of western Tennessee, some of West Virginia, a little bit of Georgia, some of Alabama, some of Mississippi, uh, and a little bit of Ohio and Indiana, and a few other states. Now you won't find the Fort Payne Chert Formation laying on the top of the ground in all these places because it was covered over by later formations, but you do find it in road cuts and in places where erosion has exposed it. Many of us, when we think about Fort Payne Chert, the first thing that comes to mind is arrowheads. So let's just have a look at some of the several different kinds of arrowheads that have come from the Fort Payne Chert Formation. Here's a piece of Fort Payne chert, and uh, it is typically this kind of tan color, but as we've seen, it can be uh, several different colors. And the chert forms in something called a chert nodule. That's where you have a hunk of limestone or cherty limestone, and concentrated in that limestone is a piece of solid chert. So let's have a look at some chert nodules. So where does the chert come from that forms in these chert nodules? Well, it can come from uh, any kind of so silicon source, quartz source, because chert is in fact quartz. It's quartz that has crystal sizes that are microscopic, and we call that cryptocrystalline quartz. One of the sources of this quartz is sponges. The bodies of sponges have a lot of silicon in them. Another source is very fine particles of sand blown off of sand dunes and blown into the water that settle down and get compacted to form this chert. As layers of limestone are forming, water comes in and picks up silicon and transports it into these chert nodules. I don't know if we know exactly how that process happens, but it does because we have chert. But the Fort Payne chert formation is more than chert for making arrowheads. It's cherty limestone that forms in these uh, layers called beds and they call it bedded chert. And um, the chert is, nodules are embedded in these layers of very cherty limestone. Here's a picture of the Fort Payne chert formation. And it can look several different ways, which is very typical of many formations. They can have uh, a variety of styles and a variety of appearances. So this is one. And here are some others. If you want to go look at the Fort Payne Chert Formation, there's a couple of places that I know of. 
First, on this map of the southeastern United States, all the colored areas represent the Cumberland Plateau, also called the Allegheny Plateau. And all along the eastern side of the colored area, uh, you'll find a layer of Fort Payne Chert down toward the bottom at the base of the Cumberland Plateau, uh, where the Cumberland Plateau rises up out of the uh, Valley and Ridge uh, province. Another place to see Fort Payne Chert is in the vicinity of Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville is in a basin, and as you head either east or west out of that basin, you'll come across a layer of the Fort Payne Chert as you rise up onto the Highland Rim. The final place I know of to see the Fort Payne Chert is in the Valley and Ridge province of Georgia and Alabama. As a matter of fact, the town of Fort Payne, Alabama was the designated original site for naming the Fort Payne Chert Formation. So how did the Fort Payne Chert Formation come about? For that story, we've got to go back to Devonian time and the Acadian orogeny or mountain building event. So let's have a look. During the Devonian time period, which lasted from about 400 million years ago to about 350 million years ago, a microcontinent, which is a small continent, moved northwest and crashed into what is now North America. This created a huge mountain range called the Acadian Mountains, which ran from about where Virginia is now all the way to the northeast up through New England and Maine and beyond. All along the western side of the Acadian Mountains was an Amazon-sized river that drained the sediments from the mountains and carried them south to a Mississippi River delta size delta where sediments accumulated above and below the water level. This delta on the edge of the sea was located where Kentucky is located now, and it was called the Borden Delta, B-O-R-D-E-N Delta. The drawings and the information about the Borden Delta that I'm getting ready to show you come from this excellent document from the University of Kentucky done by Dr. Frank Edinson and his buddies. Hey, Rock Buddies. This drawing may be a little bit hard to figure out, but it shows the Acadian Mountains uh, circled in the red oval that extended from about where Virginia is in the south, up northeast uh, to New York and beyond. It shows, the blue arrow shows the Amazon-sized river that drained these Acadian mountains and carried sediments into the Borden Delta. And the Borden Delta itself is circled and magnified. And the Borden Delta covered uh, northern Kentucky and a lot of the state of Indiana. Hey, Rock Buddies, how do you like my new hairstyle? I wanted to tell you that while the Acadian Mountains were eroding and depositing sediments into the Borden Delta, climates were really warm. And when the climate is warm, a lot of limestone can form. But right after the Borden Delta was formed, most of it was formed, the climates got cold. And when the climates are cold, limestone doesn't form as readily. Instead, uh, organisms that use silicon in their structures like sponges uh, and like radiolarians and uh, that sort of thing uh, form and that's a key in, uh, to our understanding of how the Fort Payne Chert got here. This is a really cool drawing showing a side view of the Borden Delta which is on the right side of the picture and the Fort Payne Basin that is on the left side of the picture. After the Borden Delta was deposited, the climates got cooler and these ocean currents would bring all of the silicon uh, 
down into the Fort Payne Basin, and that gave rise to a lot of sponges, a lot of these microscopic silicon um, organisms like uh, radiolarians and diatoms that incorporate silicon into their structure. In the drawing, you see all these little double pointed ellipses. They represent a lot of chert. But what's really interesting is the thing that says mounds. Those mounds were what I think is a very unique aspect of the Fort Payne chert formation, and they formed something called bioherms. A bioherm is a mound that is built up over many thousands, maybe even millions of years, and it's composed of the bodies of both uh, creatures that use silicon, like the sponges, radiolarians, and diatoms, and also creatures that use calcium in their bodies, like crinoids and starfish and others. So when you look at these bioherms out in the field, you find that they are very fossiliferous. That means very full of these fossils. Okay, rock buddies. That's the story of the Fort Payne chert. I hope you liked it, and I hope you learned something. And if you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel. That's important to me to know that I'm putting out good information. But what's really important to me right now is that you guys have a fantastic life and learning experience. I love comments, uh, and they don't have to be about geology. They can be about whatever's on your mind. So this is Papa saying, have a great week and a great month, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.